Cinema's Underbelly, the channel where we dive into the deepest, darkest trenches of the underground to analyze and review the most obscure, obscene, and controversial films that cinema has to offer. I'm your host, Jonathan Doe, and today we will be reviewing Umberto Lenzi's Eaten Alive. Eaten Alive, also known as Doomed to Die, The Emerald Jungle, and Mangiati Vivi, is the second entry in Umberto Lenzi's Cannibal Trilogy, with the first being the genre-defining Sacrifice, and the last being the infamous Cannibal Ferox. Not to be confused with the 1976 Toby Hooper release of the same name, the film's plot derives significant inspiration from the notorious 1978 Jonestown Massacre where in which cult leader Jim Jones indoctrinated his followers to leave the United States, build a commune in the jungles of Guyana, and then engage in mass suicide by drinking grape flavor aid laced with cyanide, resulting in the deaths of over 900 men, women, and children. The film centers around a young woman named Sheila, who hires a Vietnam vet named Mark to help her find her missing sister, Diana. Diana apparently went missing after joining a cult run by a man named Jonas, shortly before the cult relocated out of New York to the jungles of New Guinea. Sheila and Mark venture into the Green Inferno and manage to find Diana, but then find themselves captive in Jonas' cult. The trio are saved by a native widow named Moriah. The group of four then venture into the jungle, but are attacked by local cannibals. Sheila and Mark manage to escape, but Diana and Mariah are gang raped by the natives and then dismembered and eaten alive. Like any typical Italian cannibal film, Eaten Alive is filled with scenes of ethnocentrism, fabricated cannibal natives, unsimulated animal cruelty, and elongated scenes of graphic sexual violence. But for those who are not well versed in cannibal films, they may not be aware that a significant portion of Eaten Alive's graphic imagery consists of footage lifted from previously released cannibal works. In fact, the majority of graphic content within Eaten Alive is actually a hodgepodge of scenes taken from Lindsay's previous sacrifice, Roger Diodato's Jungle Holocaust, and Sergio Martino's Slave of the Cannibal God. A decision that Lindsay made which landed him in hot water with fellow cannibal director Roger Diodato. In fact, during the 2009 Fangoria's Weekend of Horrors in Los Angeles, I recorded Diodato expressing his feelings toward Lindsay during an Italian director's panel. I lost eyes with him. I ate him. He's a bastard. He's the only director, famous, because he's the famous who copied my film. He takes the piece of my movies, he put it in the, your movies. This is terrible. I don't like the dance. <laughs> uh, one day, in face in face, in the one festival, like that. Yeah. Really? I, I witnessed the, the fight. I mean, they were like on the stage like this. Yes, and they were arguing about we went to the cannibal movie. It was great. It was great. Kind of 45 minutes arguing was great to be there. <laughs> they almost hit each other, right? <laughs> they... All that said, Eaten Alive is a distinct entry within the cannibal genre. Yes, Lindsay blatantly stole scenes from previous cannibal directors. Yes, he tried to sensationalize and profit off of the Jonestown Massacre only a few years after it happened. And yes, the film is an absolute shit show of a picture. But all of these factors are part of what gives Eaten Alive its unique charm. Like its director, Eaten Alive is not a film with any sense of integrity. It is a true exploitation film, filled to the brim with sex, blood, gore, and political incorrectness. It is hilariously funny when it is trying to be serious, and with the help of some mind-altering substances, it may actually be a masterpiece. As always, thank you for watching, 
And if you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Till next time, this is Cinema's Underbelly.